Hey guys, it's Mr. Stewart today, and uh, we are going to be looking at matter and atoms. If I'm showing you this, it's because I'm either giving the ACT or I have a baby or both. So um, we know that matter is something we've been studying, and matter is the uh, everything that we have. It's everything that has mass, and, and everything that has mass is made up of atoms. And so everything that's matter is has mass and occupies space. This whole living thing up here doesn't really, uh, isn't really true because we can have non-living things made of matter. But that's a nice, fun, uh, uh, nice thing to say. So uh, matter and atoms are what we're going to talk about today, specifically the atoms part. So a neutron walks into a bar and asks, how much for a drink? The bartender replied, for you, my friend, no charge. Two atoms were walking across the road. One of them said, I think I lost an electron. Really, the other replied, are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. So we're talking about electric charge. And we've talked about electric charge before because that's one of those fundamental properties of matter. And those fundamental properties of matter are, are those properties like mass and like electric charge. And gravity is another fundamental property of matter that we've talked about. Also, uh, there's, there's some magnetism, which is a pro property of matter. Um, and so electric charge, we talked about with electricity, there are three charges. We have positive charges, negative charges, and we have neutral charges. So the positive charges are inside an atom. Uh, and there are negative charges inside an atom, and those are the charges that attract. We know that the opposites attract. The negatives and the positives are going to attract, and that holds this atom together. Uh, all the positives are there in the nucleus. The negatives are flying around on the outside here. And so that's another statement. All matter has electric charge. It's a fundamental property of matter. You should probably know this one since it's all on, on its own on this big slide. So charge is always going to behave. All right, Charge is always going to do the same thing. They're always going to have a force. And a force is a push or a pull. We haven't talked much about forces. But these arrows represent those forces. And so these are positive and negative charges. And a positive charge is going to push towards a negative charge. There's a, there's a force there between those two. Positive charges are going to push away from each other. You can see this relationship. And it looks a lot like those magnetic relationships that we saw with magnetism and with our uh, our magnetic fields and so this is actually a diagram of electric field and that electric field measures force so forces are always going to be there between positive and negative charges as well as between positive and positive charges and once again we know that Positive and negatives attract, opposite charges attract, and like charges are going to repel each other. So we're going to see a force of repulsion there, and a force of repulsion there, and a force of attraction here. And that electric force is what comes from the charged particles inside those atoms. And we've talked about this electric force before because we looked at those charges. <clears throat> and those charges come from are particles. And we have three particles inside the nucleus. We have neutrons and protons in the nucleus. Those are those red and blue pro, uh, particles right there. Our reds are our protons, and our blues are our neutrons in this case. And we have black electrons flying around. Those electrons hang out in energy levels outside the nucleus. So these three particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, they differ by lots of things. They have, uh, they differ by charge. And so a proton, I tell my students, pu -pu -pu protons are pu -pu -pu positive. They have a positive charge. N -n -n neutrons are n -n -n neutral. They have a neutral charge, meaning they don't have a charge. Um, and electrons are negative. There's no fun way to, to repeat the sound of electrons. So we just have to remember that electrons have that negative charge. And you can think electricity are those moving negative charges. So that's where we get that electron from. The word electron actually comes from the word electricity. Um, the protons determine what element they are. If you watched in the video that we've seen in Hunting the Elements, 
all the elements have different numbers of protons. If it's an element of gold, it has 79 protons. If it's an element of hydrogen, it has one proton. Every atom that has one proton is hydrogen. Every atom that has 79 protons is gold. The neutrons, the number of those can change. And so we can have 79 neutrons in, a, in an atom of gold, and we can have 79 neutrons in an atom of something else. We can have 78 neutrons in an atom of gold. That number can change. It can still be the same element. Uh, electrons generally equal that, uh, that number of protons. That's our atomic number here. Now, I've got mass in different places here. And, and over here, I've got electrons have no mass. Mass is a measurement of, of how much stuff is there. And, and actually, electrons do have a mass, but electrons are really, really small. They're super, super tiny. And so they don't have a mass that's, that's measurable, really, for our, for our uh, purposes, because the neutrons and the protons have equal masses, and they're so much bigger. It's something like 10 to the 16th power greater mass uh, of protons and neutrons than electrons have. So the electrons basically don't contribute any mass to our atoms. The mass from our atoms comes from our neutrons and our protons. The protons give us the atomic number. That's that uh, number, the 79 in gold. Atomic number 79 means it has 79 protons, and that tells us that that element is gold because of that number. Um, those protons are in the nucleus. Just like our neutrons, those neutrons are in the nucleus. Um, and neutrons are responsible for something called isotopes. And so like I said earlier, if, if an atom of gold had 79 neutrons, it would be one isotope. If it had 78 neutrons, it would have it would be another isotope. And so different numbers of neutrons gives a, an atom a little bit different properties, and so it changes that, uh, that isotope. Electrons, if you lose or gain electrons, we call it an ion. And an ion is basically a charged particle. If we lose, ion, uh, lose electrons, we've changed the charge. We haven't changed anything about the element except for we've changed the charge. If we lose protons, we can't lose protons because those they're locked away inside the nucleus. And so the protons are locked away inside that nucleus. So they can't leave or, or come back. It's only the electrons that can leave and come back. And so we get ions there. If we change the number of protons, we change the atom. If we change the number of electrons, we don't change much. We just change the charge and turn it into an ion. So here, let's talk a little bit about ions. Here we have a, two neutral atoms. And so these are neutrally charged. They are neutral uh, atoms. Uh, they all, each have three electrons, and in this bottom picture, we've got one atom that's getting rid of one electron, it's losing an electron, and it's giving the electron to another atom, and that is a gain of electron. And so if it gains an electron, it's left with a negative charge, which is a negative ion, and if it loses an electron, it's left with a positive charge, so that's a positive ion. And so we have to remember... Gaining means negative, and losing means positive, and that's, a, that's an opposite relationship than we normally think, but it's not a minus, it's a negative. We have to think it's, it's a, a negative charge rather than, uh, rather than losing a charge. It's, it's actually gaining that negative charge, so that's one way to remember that. So once again, we've got our neutral atoms. And one gives an electron over to another atom. And we're left with a positive ion. And we're left with a negative ion. The negative ion, once again, has an extra electron. And so we can count, count up the charges in an object. If we have the same number of positives, here we have eight positives, and the same number of negatives, there's eight negatives here, we would have a neutral object. And that's how we count up and, and find out whether we have an ion or not. We have a positive charge and we have a negative charge. And if the total adds up to zero, it's neutral. If the charge doesn't add up to zero, then it's going to be an ion. It can be a negative ion or a positive ion. All right, we also talked about isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. And so different numbers of neutrons means an atom can have a different mass. <clears throat> so here's an atom of 
hydrogen. It's an isotope of hydrogen. And hydrogen, if you look on your periodic table, uh, hydrogen is atomic number one. It has one proton. And this is the typical atom uh, or nucleus of, of hydrogen. And it's called, we call it protium. Now, this one proton, sometimes hydrogen can be a little heavier. And sometimes hydrogen has an extra particle in the nucleus. It's got one neutron. And that one neutron gives it a little bit more mass. And so it ends up being called something called deuterium. Du meaning two. That's the, the, the root there is de, and that's uh, from the French language. And so we've got two of these. So we've got one proton, one neutron. That's two total mass in the middle. And then we have this isotope, which actually has a mass of three. It's got three particles in the nucleus, one proton and two neutrons. And we call this one tritium, tri meaning three. And so we've got tritium, deuterium, and protium, all isotopes of hydrogen. The reason we know they're hydrogen is because they only have one proton each. And that's what tells us it's hydrogen. So how do we show our atoms? How do we look at atoms? We have to be able to see what's going on. And this is an activity, and we've got some, uh, some options here. We've got... Uh, obviously, we have a nucleus here, and we have this nucleus, and this nucleus has uh, protons and neutrons. The protons are red, and the neutrons are gray, and then we have these energy levels on the outside to represent where those electrons are, and we've got electrons here. Um, and so we can see, here's a picture of our periodic table. Here's this picture of our periodic table, and we've got a symbol, and this symbol tells us that this is a helium atom, and this helium atom has two red protons and it has four total mass four in the nucleus and this button over here this picture tells us the charge so this tells us we have two red positives and we have two blue negatives and so two positive plus two negative gives us a net of zero and so we have zero charge on this object it's a neutral and so we, we show that it is neutral here. We've got a, a little checkbox here. Um, and you guys are going to be doing this activity in just a few minutes. So we can change the particles in an atom. So what's going on here? Here we have four in the nucleus. We have two protons. So that means we have two protons. Four in the nucleus means we have two uh, neutrons, two protons and two neutrons. Here, we have two, new, two protons, and we have a mass of six. So this mass of six tells us that we have two protons, and six minus two means we have four neutrons. Over here, we have back to two protons and two neutrons, because our mass is four, but we have a one plus charge, which means we've gotten rid of an electron. If we have a plot positive charge, we've lost an electron. We've only lost one, because we still have two electrons in our atom. So that's what this uh, little part tells us, um, is the number of... Sorry about that phone call. Uh, I'm right back here, and I'm, you probably didn't even know I was gone, but I, w I was gone. Um, so we can change those particles in here. We also look at something called valence electrons, and you need to know about valence electrons for this activity. Uh, and valence electrons are the electrons in our outermost energy level. So outermost energy level is our valence energy level. And there's actually a certain number of electrons that can fit in each energy level. We can only hold two electrons in our first energy level. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But there's only two in the first energy level. And in this activity, you can't drop, uh, you can't drag and drop things in without... Um, without them sticking and so you won't actually be able to put more than two electrons in the first energy level um, and so we have one valence electron in this atom because it has three protons and three electrons and there's only got one in the uh, in the outermost energy level and so that is one valence electron so your assignment is in Google Classroom, uh, and so I'll have you guys work on that, and I'll post another video kind of going over it. So here you go. Thanks, guys.